fun games getting into this here, continuing to load in. We have, of course, all 50 duos touching down in the world here. And like I said, I couldn't be more excited to see what and how this is all going to play out. For starters, though, we have the Booga and Agers versus Zeus and Pikes to give us a little bit of a treat, a battle here. It's been ending so fast. I think we see why it's almost like a 50-50 contest. Landing for the weapons, and they've been pushing one another exceptionally quickly. Hey, no guts, no glory. After all, Booga knocked one more time. Agers now game 12 entirely on his shoulders. He does have a gatekeeper shotgun, but as a solo here, two versus one, Zeus and Pikes, they want to stamp their mark here in game 12. They want to take down Booga and Agers yet again, likely trying to hit the emo victory dance on them as well. Standings aside, this is all just pride on the line here between these two teams. And Zeus and Pikes, what looked like they were willing to exchange blows initially, maybe scouted out the fact that Agers. This video is sponsored by Gamer Games, a platform that lets you earn and compete for cash and crypto playing Fortnite. Easily sign up, connect your Epic account, and you're ready to earn. Once you're signed up, you can easily accept daily challenges by launching their Overwolf app and start playing like you normally would. Once you complete a challenge, you are instantly paid out in cash or crypto. You can also compete like a Fortnite pro with their contest feature, which ranks you up against other players based on the best scores from your recent ranked games. Fouled out for the top spots in the leaderboard and get paid out in cash for crypto based on your performance. Use my referral code in the description to get a completely free bonus when you sign up. It has left them in a relatively rough spot as far as the leaderboard is concerned. And we won't see the conclusion just yet. Thanks to that. Porta body escape, but School and Thoric, they can't feel too safe over at Grand Glacier. Saw another team closing in on the distance, but back over at Grim Gate. Crunched some numbers while we were waiting for this lobby to begin, MDF. 203 points separating first and second place. If Peterbot and Pollo don't get a single elimination and are dropped outside of top 25 to get zero placement points, all Re and Rich will have to do is win this final lobby and get 18 eliminations, and they are so back for first place on the leaderboard. So back, yeah. That's a crazy thing to ask after they've already won <laughs> a game today. It just, it really makes you wonder what we would be looking at if Re and Ritual just didn't fight, honestly, didn't fight Miro and Dukes. Like, that's a crazy team to fight. Obviously, you don't know who you're fighting on the outskirts of the maps, and we, we said it, it can go either which way. I and mean, they didn't even lose the battle. That, that's the other crazy part. They didn't even lose the battle. It was just a storm, right? Like they were doing it in the storm. They were worse for wears on the rotate and they got caught out. So is what it is. Not on Cooper getting active right now. Saw obviously cold putting in work at the draw spot. You're seeing and Krizik's oh. falling. Muslim paper as well. <laughs> I was about to start going in pace with the shots. But, yeah, it's definitely interesting that Kanata and Cooper, they have worked so quickly out of their drop at Kieran's Crossing, try and pay a visit to some of these teams at the Underworld. It's an okay loadout, though, to, to start some fights, start some early game engagements. It's definitely in the back of Kanata and Cooper's minds that they also want to cement their spot in that top three leaderboard, even better still have a monumental game 12 and overtake second place. Pars and Baka here, Baka with the big base. Pars on the warehouse. Popping tags at Peter Button Boya way off in the distance who are looking to push a team as well. Seems like they double back. They're like, okay, wait a second. These dudes seems way far. Not worth expending our materials to close this gap. Let's find a more unsuspecting team. And this is the first season jack. This is not ideal though for Cease and Jack. Jack trying to do what he can to defend Cease 
inside of this box, but when you got Peterbot and Poyo just nailing down on you from two separate angles. It does mean, though, if Peterbot and Poyo aren't careful, they could potentially find themselves getting knocked. And sure enough, some shots Unexpected. coming from behind. That's a, that's a good push back, though. No, no, it was Jack dashing in the box and actually tagging Peter from behind. That was very quickly, and, and honestly, it's like Peter probably had a little taste of his own medicine. That is how he <laughs> normally bodies other players. Just don't expect it. Sees though, he's got to make sure that he holds or above him. Peter Bot claiming it. Peter Bot slamming Cease. Just zero opportunity for any sort of a comeback. That's going to be the end of the line here for Cease currently. And it could spell disastrous for Jack. Restored Reels has just become such a big focal point in match 12 here for Peter Bot and Pollo. And Jack trying to escape. A sniper shot not going to connect from Peter Bot. And it's not like they even necessarily needed those resources from Cease. That just looked like a full-on key opportunity that Peterbot and Pillio were after. Yeah, after the damage here, this lobby looks like all morale out the window. Down to 77 players already. The desperation kicking in as everyone tries to attempt their last chances at climbing up here, making more money. Fighting for the Globals. Josh and Skittles, man. They're one of those few teams that can actually catch up to Kanata and Cooper. Like we talked about, they're in third. Not too far off. One thing, though, with the way that the lobby is so quickly getting chipped away at in terms of player count, that surge threshold might not actually be as big of an issue. So for some of our teams, it could be a, a point of relief, but really just all depends on how that player count holds up throughout the rest of these zones and whether or not that Storm Surge damage is then going to become a, a topic of conversation here yet again. But as for Bryce and Bolts, they're preoccupied, just looking to defend from their forecast tower position see whether or not they can scout out any teams they can look to try and pick off try and apply a little bit of pressure towards i think a lot of teams also kind of just searching out playing a lot more aggressive because they're they know six points per elimination there is still a good amount of prize pool money that could potentially be the the gaps jumped up in terms of the leaderboard teams aren't careful that's exactly it there is still a lot of prizing to be had here Let's see what Booga and Agers, man, you have to, you have to think like Booga and Agers are, you know, they were kind of fired up in the first several rounds and then to be sitting out as early and for as long as they have been, I mean, if they weren't queuing into creative, I wonder if they've lost their steam. Well, time will tell when they fight this duel right in front of them here. This is a battle for, is that for the bunker down low? Does that seem like it? It is, but... The problem still stands. Several other teams that Booga and Agers are going to have to deal with first. Peter Bot Poyo also caught in their own engagement, still hanging out by the likes of Restored Reels. Only this time it's visuals and Brave that they've got in their sights. Peter Bot looking to take the sidewall. Continues trying to find some form of exposure. Nearly connects a good tag on the visuals, but dashes away. Recognizes the fact these two playing a little bit too close for comfort. And Peterbot just doesn't want to take any sort of chance in terms of just not wanting to get all of his resources depleted. He's just trying to build up his mat count. He'll leave Poyo to handle the business, if anything. I wonder if he was just hunting for Jack. Like, is this Jack? You know, he's looking for the <laughs> solo. This Jack was just there in the building, sitting super quietly. His ritual re Nice little position up top. And yeah, you already touched on the fact that in the last lobby, they didn't necessarily lose. They won that initial engagement up against the likes of Miro and Dukes, but 
realistically, it's just how much time they spent in that outside of zone position that ultimately resulted in them just not being able to set themselves up for success. When you rotate so late towards the zone, it just becomes all the easier for teams that are already based up, teams that are already in a safe position to then just focus exclusively onto you. Ritual caught an inkling <laughs> of idea, clicks an <laughs> epic on the train. I was just about to say, look who's jumping off the train. Clicks an epic will arrive <laughs> at the station. What's happening here? We got Paco mixing trashy Skittles. Okay, so first of all, trashy Skittles gotta be super careful if they want top three right now. Because they're caught in between Chance and Aaron right now and Paco mixing on the outside. Six chug splashes though. Skittles has to get this duo. There it is. One had to heal up for a second. Paco Mixon starting to close the distance, close the gap. They want, they want this fight. Paco Mixon has performed very well in these early game types of battles. I'm not sure we've seen the likes of Trashy and Skittles fight a team like them this early. This is a crazy fight though to be taking place. This far south, Seaside Villa, three teams just Fighting over sticks and stones, essentially. Maybe Trashy and Skittles thought they'd be able to secure some elimination points. Can't really see any other reason for them to rotate to this part of the map. Aside from the fact that maybe they got a knock at some point, but even then with zero eliminations, yeah, it just seems like they were trying to pick a fight just to eliminate a duo. Another Rift Island push from Peter Bon and Pollo here. Secure the capture point. It's not that they need it, but it doesn't hurt for them to have this big opportunity to farm up all this material as well. It's also they just take it away from any other team to potentially claim that would actually be in a much more uh, spot of necessity for those kinds of resources that the capture point has to offer there on Rift Island. Kanata and Cooper just looking to play their own game. The start of today was definitely looking a lot more like a scramble, but Kanata and Cooper have definitely seemed like they have pieced something together here because they have been holding strong to that third place spot on the leaderboard ever since they stole it back from Bryce and Bolts, but they want to make sure that they conclude today inside of that top three. They can't afford to let off the gas just yet. With another team and another surge tower directly next to them, Yumi and Vert. But Kanata's got an angle where he's not exposing himself to Yumi and Vert. He's just applying pressure onto teams that are approaching from that west side of fencing fields. Yeah, personally, I don't see them giving up their position. I think Kanata and Cooper are going to remain consistent this game and. Walk away with third, and I do think Re and Ritual will do the same here for Cold and Acorn. Can't tell you how things are going to go for them just yet as Cold gets just hugely punished there, and this is it's going to cost them. I mean, it's going to cost them all their Chug Splash if they don't have a mid kit or can find something. There it is. It's their Jaw Spot. They know where the stuff's at. Seems like these are some goodies that they intentionally left behind. They planned on revisiting if necessary. You could see that old surge tower that Acorn has on top of some of the roofs here at Fencing Fields. Larson and Oliver OG though. A little bit further out from the zone than they would like to be and it's evident teams have already taken note of their current position. They might have to fight their way on this south pathing path that they've opted to go for. But they might have just done enough. Still trying to work their way around the river, use some of the natural landscaping to keep themselves safe from teams that are already in more ideal positioning inside of the zone. Oh my. Trashy and Skid has taken one out of literally Mixon's book. You can see him at the distance. This is all they've been doing all weekend long. Dead side rotates through and through. Ooh. Trashy's stopping to heal here. 
gonna say, I didn't see Paco. And Trashy has one elimination. Yeah, could have been. Still a crazy dead side rotate to be making here at this point, though. Hey, look at I didn't even realize Blake and Macward are a ninth after how many times they've been eliminated off the spawn. That's still impressive, like coming into game 12 and, and quite literally knowing that they've been dropped off spawn several times. Yeah, top 10 in the first place when you're so directly contested and a pretty 50 50 off spawn. Oh, there's Paco. So it does appear. That's just the earlier elimination that Skittles and Trashy had already been holding on to all game long. I'm not sure who they managed to find that on, but it's curious to see them just kind of chasing behind Paco and Mixon in this final lobby. But yeah, Blake and Macwood, solid performance. Contested in top 10 if they can hold on to it. We're already at zone six, halfway through the last game. The grand finals now, Rian Ritual still one of the teams standing here, standing strong, holding their second place position on the leaderboards. Locked and loaded here. So long as Kanata and Cooper are in the game though, their second place is threatened. They're right next to him. They're based up right here. The fact that they're going for walls, they might need some damage. This is gonna be an all out fight here shortly between Bryce and Bolt. Cooper and Kanata, Bryson Bolts would love to take these teams down and actually take third place from Cooper and Kanata. Oh. No, it was the <laughs> rift they were camping. Okay, I didn't see that one there. Just look at every single one the of these teams, though. <laughs> That's our top five leaderboard, essentially. All flying right. through the sky currently off that rift. Just stay with them. Just keep the drone shot following these guys. <laughs> They're all moving in a pack, too. If you just look at the map, they're all landing kind of near each other. This is going to be very interesting now. Ooh, Peterbot hurt here. Does have plenty of shields, though, to regenerate back to 100 shield. Could use a splash as well to fully regain his white HP, but Golden Acorn, look at this. Just completely captured. Seek and dash off guard. It's a slippery slope sometimes when you're making these rotates. It's easy to just stay fixated on what's in front of you, but you've also got to make sure that you keep your back well protected. Otherwise, it leaves that little bit of wiggle room for a team like Acorn and Cole to slide right in, get those two eliminations, and now just empowering themselves. Try and set up for a solid late game. Kanata and Cooper, same mentality as well. They don't have an elimination just yet, but they have an okay amount of builds. They definitely could be seeking out a refresh sometime soon, though. Still using the Wings of Icarus tech to make these short rotates a little bit more feasible, not necessarily having to expend all of their Flowberry Fizz. Down to the final 15, even, for Kanata. Blake is still cooking too, even while all of this is going down. Top 25, placing points now being divvied out to the lobby here. Cool to see all of our top five teams still in the game right now, but this is where all the critical and crucial points are going to start being given out here. Important rotates happening right now for Kanata and Cooper here. Their game 11 winner sized up right in front of them. The Vivian Chubbs there. Kanata Cooper below the surge. They will have to jump on a team. Options are Blake and Mackwood to the right. Aviven Chubbs and Re and Ritual coming in late from the storm right now. But I don't even think they're safe, actually. I think they will have to. Oh, yeah, they, they have just enough space. It's going to be pretty close for Kanata Cooper. I don't even think they saw the team in the bush there. It's Reitz. Oh, caught him when he tries to make a quick move. And now second place could be opening up here for Kanata and Cooper. Look at that extra bit of Flowberry Fizz, though, that Kanata was just able to find, and a med kit. He's going to ditch the last of his Flowberry Fizz, but that is huge because we are looking at a south pulling zone here, MDF. Brawler's Battleground, this mountain face elevation that could potentially come into play this part of the map. That full 100 Flowberry Fizz could be a massive saving grace currently for Cooper and Kanata's final lobby. You can 
see Bolt and Bryce struggling right now. The damage setting them back for a second. And meanwhile, your FNCS Grand Finals champions are here. Peter Bot, Boyo with a victory lap in motion right now. Take a look. Still lighting up the lobby. Still fighting and breaking those point records. They're trying to close this one out with a ribbon finish. Do you see how gnarly that setup is, though, from all of these teams? Just varying levels of elevation. Multiple boxes built along the side of this mountain face. Aviv and Chubbs, they're trying to navigate their way through. The mid-ground layers are just so scuffy to work with right now, though. Kanata also trying to claim some space of his own. Taking him more towards the low ground, as is. Running relatively low on builds. Might get an opportunity here. A couple of tags applied. Saucy getting lit up currently. Saucy not. That's a big shot. Kanata and Cooper might get the benefits. It's Yasir who actually got the credits, but no Yasir and Krizix. They're able to close in first. Kanata, Cooper left with nothing. They might be able to cut them off though. Krizix still trying to work his way up. The zone pulls back. Kanata now with Cooper. A little bit stuck, but still managing to make it work. Yeah, they've already set the trap. Dashes past and a huge monster shot onto Breeze there. Just claiming more and more points here at the very, very end. As we already know, they have a chance to fight for more cash money. Cash prize is what's on the line here for everyone who is still looking to claw their way past their opponents. Meanwhile, Peterbot actually finds Cooper, but Trashy getting mixy here in this this is just a face dive off the cliff right here. If you want to stay in the zone right now, Peter Bot's up top. They're trying to win this game here, slowly working their way up. They have the material count as well here. There goes the, the coin swap. Here comes the Flowberry Fizz. Even if they didn't have the material count, the fact that they had that aspect of agility alone when you're dealing with a zone that is just pulling back and forth over these differing levels of elevation, so much easier for Peterbot and Pollo to just hyper fixate on how they want to play this game. They have the luxury of not having to expend that many materials. Kanata, meanwhile, he just finds another small moment to breathe. Picks up a little bit of materials, trying to just keep it moving, jumping every which way. Doesn't want to get found out just yet. Every single point counts to maintain that third place spot. Peter and Boyo break the builds from underneath Rapid and they have the high ground. They were just waiting to seize the moment and once again, they do it perfectly executed here in zone number 10. They have just been the best team, not only on the day, today, yesterday, but this entire season. It has really been the Peter Bot and Boyo show and you gotta give respects to both of these players, they've just kept up such a ridiculous pace over the lobby. Meanwhile, called an acorn, okay. Seeing them in the 619 point area now. Eight eliminations here. Makes you wonder if they just had an even slightly better day one. Colden acorn could be contesting for that first place finish right now, but that's gonna have to happen a different day. Look, we could talk about Acorn and Cold and how they pick things up here in game two, but Peter Bot and Pollo, they've got over a thousand points, MDF. Forget about records. This is FNCS history that we are witnessing with these two Titans in NA currently, and they are just keeping the ball rolling. Rise, next on the charts, Peter Bot trying to just attach even more eliminations for the individual record he's already set here today in NA, along with the points title. Pollo still hanging out way up above the clouds, top of the mountain letting Peterbot do whatever he wants to in these layers underneath, dropping to the low ground, oh. rapid Batman Booga next in his sights. That's what's impressive about this. Peterbot is down here literally 2v1ing, fighting everyone while Boyo's like, hey man, I'll make sure I lock in the win. You go do your thing and hurt the lobby, make it impossible for them to stay alive at this point. And Boyo's got his win conditions. He's got 
the heals to work with. Peterbot slowly, surely, methodically working his way down. Every time he finds two players, though, he does start to ease up on the gas pedal and play a little bit more passively. It's not just reckless peeing at this point. It's all smart play. The reads are so good right there. And we talked about what he was capable of. And he does it again. The moment that we saw Peter Bot and Polio claiming the high ground here in game 12, that was all.